now there are some differences between what's been described as the Kawasaki disease like manifestations uh, and what's been seen in these patients. So those who have typical Kawasaki disease, 80% of them tend to be under the age of five, whereas almost all of those who had what's been called the multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children um, have been five years of age or older. In fact, the group that most commonly has been described with this multiple inflammatory syndrome um, are predominantly in um, African-Americans or, or uh, in UK, actually, predominantly Afro-Caribbeans. Um, whereas Asians are the highest risk for, uh, have highest risk for Kawasaki disease. And this has yet to be described in Japan or China, even though the very first cases of this were seen in China. In this new inflammatory syndrome, almost always children early on have severe gastrointestinal changes, abdominal pain, nausea, diarrhea, whereas this is not particularly common with Kawasaki disease. And the big hallmark that everybody worries about so in this multi-system inflammatory syndrome is the, the myocardial dysfunction that's related to inflammation with increases in certain laboratory tests that reflect uh, myocarditis like the uh, pro-BMP and the troponin, markedly increased in this new syndrome, whereas with Kawasaki disease, sometimes there's myocardial dysfunction, but the markers tend to be normal or at best mildly increased. And the hallmark of Kawasaki disease is the development of the coronary aneurysms, whereas these have been described in multiple inflammatory and multi-system inflammatory syndrome but they tend to be smaller, they're not quite as common. Acute phase reactants are increased in both, but there are other laboratory changes that, that are different. Um, lymphopenia, no leukocytosis, for example, in MIS-C, uh, whereas in Kawasaki disease, we see leukocytosis and no lymphopenia. The platelet counts tend to be uh, low with MIS-C and normalized with recovery, whereas in Kawasaki disease, it's known for its marked thrombocytosis, particularly moving out at days 10 to 14. But both of these disorders are now thought to be post-infection and the inflammatory manifestations in these children. And both so far have responded to aspirin, certainly IVIG has been a mainstay and, and steroids are uh, an important component of treating the um, multi-system inflammatory syndrome, they have been used as well in Kawasaki disease. This has raised a lot of questions, like what does this tell us about Kawasaki disease, for example? And that's very interesting. Uh, could Kawasaki disease be from a virus? Could it result from a coronavirus? And that's why we're seeing so much of this right now. I think many who are um, studying Kawasaki disease and have been for years do feel that this is an inflammatory response to a virus. But I think the question is, is it a coronavirus? Is there any relationship to a virus we know, this SARS-CoV-2? And I will say that having talked recently to an expert who's doing this kind of research, it does not look like that's the case. So a variety of tests have been done to find in Kawasaki disease tissue, viral inclusions, virus-like particles. And these are not corona size. So the coronavirus is a very large virus and the viral particles in Kawasaki disease have not been big enough in diameter to think that it's related to a coronavirus. Also, there's been study looking um, with high throughput RNA sequencing data at sequences that have been identified in tissue. And these are not compatible either with coronaviruses. So it is likely, in fact, that Kawasaki disease results from a virus, but not from a coronavirus or this coronavirus. Um, scientists are on their way to discover what virus that might be. But I think it's safe to say that at least the mechanism of our bodies in fighting back viruses of different types, one of them being the SARS-CoV-2, must be similar enough that it's leading to this hyperinflammation 
that's giving phenotypic changes that are very similar. 